We appreciate everybody coming out tonight and uh, uh, participating in our uh, Town Hall Tuesday. And uh, this is a, a good opportunity for us to uh, uh, help educate our residents a little bit more about our budget process, some of the uh, services and programs we provide. And then uh, we also want to uh, take this time to uh, get some input from you on, uh, on some of the, on what we're doing and how we're spending your tax dollars. And uh, we will provide all of that information to the council. And uh, speaking of the city council, I want to go ahead and introduce uh, the members who are here tonight. So we have Mayor Stan Pickett, uh, Councilmember Tandy Burroughs, Councilmember Dan Alamon, and in the back, uh, Councilmember Robert Miklos. Um, I, I think a couple of others may be trying to come in late. I know Mr. Archer uh, called me just a few minutes ago and uh, expressed his uh, regrets. He is tied up uh, work, with a work issue, so he won't be here tonight. Um, just a little bit about Town Hall. I think most of y'all look like regulars, but uh, in case we have some uh, new attendees tonight, uh, uh, we have uh, restrooms on either side of the doors over here, so uh, feel free uh, if, if you need to uh, make a visit. Uh, it's not gonna interrupt us at all. We'll, uh, uh, we'll, we'll get through it. And um, in questions and answers, uh, uh, we're gonna present a lot of information. At any time you have a question, feel free to raise your hand. And uh, if you'll allow us to bring the microphone to you, uh, we are recording uh, this and we are uh, streaming live as well. So we want uh, the people who are watching remotely probably staying in, uh, in the house and avoiding the heat uh, the, so they can hear your question and hear the dialogue as well. Uh, but again, at any time, feel free to uh, at, raise your hand and ask a question. Uh, there will be a, an opportunity at the end of the presentation to do uh, some more question and answers. Uh, we're here tonight. We can talk about uh, a number of things. If there's something specific, if there's a problem going on with your uh, next door neighbor or on your street, uh, we have several city staff here tonight that can uh, take those types of, of questions as well. But if you can't keep your questions focused on the budget or the different programs, uh, but again, we're here uh, as long as you need us to be here tonight. And uh, uh, finally, um, you know, it, it is budget time, and uh, this is uh, when the city council and the city staff come together uh, to plan uh, for next year's uh, programs and services. And uh, over the years, uh, uh, we've been trying to be a little bit more strategic. So a lot of the things we're going to present in this year's budget are not gonna impact only fiscal year 2019, but 2020, 2021. And so uh, what we do as a process to get to this point is uh, a whole year's worth of work. Uh, and it, it starts off with uh, an analysis of council's policies and goals. And all of those are formed from input that the council gets from citizens. We have a citizen survey that went out last year. Uh, it's uh, gonna be coming out here in uh, September, October timeframe again this year. Uh, we gather the information that we received at these town hall meetings uh, through your uh, emails and, and phone calls to city staff over the years. All of that information uh, along with uh, neighborhood meetings and just interactions with council members. All of those things com combine to get to the council as we meet in a, a, a goal workshop, and that's usually uh, in uh, November or December. And the council discusses a, a wide variety of programs, where we've been, where we're going, uh, what do we really need to be doing. In the spring, we, uh, the staff kind of works up some, uh, some different programs and uh, ideas for the council, and then they really try to give us a priority of where they really want us to focus. And then for the next few months, we work on developing what we call strategies. And those strategies are what we will present to council uh, this uh, uh, Friday and Saturday at our budget workshop. And so we go, go through all of this effort to get to uh, a budget allocation. And uh, the city council will approve a budget in September. And um, that is what we uh, use uh, starting October 1st, uh, again, to provide those programs and then we start the process all over. So uh, we as staff refer to it as our model of success. We, we really feel that we've been very successful at spending the time to talk over issues, gain input from citizens, and really come up with uh, programs and uh, putting people in the right positions to achieve uh, what we need to improve our community. And uh, just to highlight some of the council priorities, I'm, uh, again, uh, hopefully y'all are f very familiar with all of these, but these are the uh, priority areas that the council 
has, uh, has asked us to focus on uh, this coming year. And uh, as always, we can't, we can't do everything. And so that is why we uh, bring the strategies to the council. Uh, they take available resources and, and match up expenditures. And so uh, tonight uh, we have an exercise for you. We have a great presentation from uh, our finance staff. So uh, we, we look forward to presenting that. And uh, truly at the end, I really appreciate any input that y'all can provide, uh, not only on the budget, but how we might be able to uh, uh, serve you uh, better uh, in the community. So with that, I'm going to uh, introduce uh, Debbie Mole, our Director of Finance, and I'll let her take it from here. Thank you. Just to take it from where Cliff left off, of course, um, understanding the budget process is vitally important to you as a citizen of the city of Mesquite because um, you invest your dollars in Mesquite through property taxes and sales tax and user's fees. User's fees would be like garbage collection fees and maybe programs that you participate in in the Parks and Rec program or library, things like that. So these revenues are used to fund vital city services. So. Um, if you look at it that way, city services are a return on your investment of the money that you pay in through those different forms, property tax, sales tax. Property tax seems to be the big topic for most people, right, as a property owner here in Mesquite. So if you think about it, Dallas Central Appraisal District, they set the appraised value for each home in the, in the Dallas County. So in, and each home is supposed to be reviewed at least every three years. So you know that your property is valued up to date with current values according to the Dallas Central Appraisal District. So um, for the average home in Mesquite, it's been established for our upcoming tax year that the average home value is $108,580. Now that's the average. So we have lower and we have higher throughout the city. So, and then of course, property taxes are then calculated on the appraised value, the taxable value of each home within the city of Mesquite. So here's a question for you. How much of your total property tax bill do you think goes to the city of Mesquite? So anybody want to take a guess before? So of your total tax bill, like percentage-wise, how much of that do you think goes to the city of Mesquite? Anybody want to take a guess? A fourth. So that would be like 25%, right? Wow, we should give her a prize, right? She's very close. So this is how, if you take that average home value of 108000 and you apply the tax rates from the various entities that send you a tax bill. Mesquite's not the only one that sends you a tax bill. So your total tax bill on that home would be $2,526. It would be broken down like this. Of course, you have the tax bill. On the city's tax bill, you get taxed from the city and the school district. You also get a bill from Dallas County that has the hospital district, Dallas County, and the Dallas County Dallas, Dallas Community College District is the, is the last one there. So on a percentage-wise, um, that breaks down to be, you're right, less than 30%, 29% of your total taxes paid on an annual basis go to the city of Mesquite. I think sometimes when property owners get their tax bill, they think it's all city, but it's really not. The bigger portion, of course, is the school district at 48%. And then you have the other entities there at 9, 10, and 4%. So the city of Mesquite getting just 29% of that total tax bill from the average homeowner. So Mesquite's annual city tax bill, if you take that average home value and you apply the city's current tax rate of 0.687 per $100 of value, that comes out to be the city's portion of your tax bill is $745 on an annual basis. So when you look at that, um, Let's break it down to monthly, because we're going to do some analysis here. So if you take that $745, that's $62 a month, okay? So when we do that, I want you to consider this. The Mesquite's monthly city tax bill on the average home, $62 a month, provides 24-hour EMS response, neighborhood services, economic development, planning and zoning services, health services, parks, rec centers, swimming pools, street services, 24-hour police protection, uh, building inspection, 24-hour fire protection, animal services, traffic services, general government services, and, and many, many more that you'll see through the process tonight. So really, all in all, I would say it's a great return on your investment if you think about it. So look at it this way. Consider this. Your average cable bill, the average cable bill for a family in the United States is $100 a month. Now, mine is more than that. I don't know about yours, but, well, I guess it's my cable and my internet, right? So if you package it together, they give you the package deal, right? So, but if you look at just cable, say the average, 
bill for a family might be $100 a month. The average individual cell phone bill is about $70 a month. So, no, he's shaking his head back there. No, yours is more than that, right? <laughs> so, um, so you get what it, you see what we're getting at. For $62 a month, I would say it's a great return on investment for all the services, the vital city services that you're getting as a citizen here in the, in the city of Mesquite. So with that in mind, now we're going to change things up. If you were here last year, we did the bucket exercise, but we're going to change things up this year. Myra Rogers, she's our manager of budget and financial analysis. She's been with the city over 12 years. She's going to come and work you through this. So we're going to, we want you to tell us how to spend your tax dollars. So Myra's going to come explain. All right. Debbie mentioned to you earlier the the average um, home, the, the average um, annual tax bill for a city of Mesquite citizen is $745. So we're going to give you in an envelope $750 of tax bills and they're in $10 increments. So y'all can go ahead and start passing them out. So, and if you, it, and you see up here, we've got 22 buckets of all the different services. And underneath each of the bucket, that tells you how much of an annual tax bill of the $750 is needed to, to fund current level services. So as you're putting your money in, if, you, if you're happy with the level of service, you would just have to put in you know, close to what it has at the bottom of the bucket. But if you want that service to be expanded, you're gonna have to put some more money in there of your tax bill. So you, at this time, you can all, um, well, I'll go through the bucket, so let me see. So these are all the services up here, 1 through 22, and they're in order up here as well. Um, most of them Debbie kind of mentioned. Um, these are the common services that the city provides to citizens for your, t for your tax um, money and so number 22 I just want to explain that one the capital improvement projects that's um, to fund major street um, reconstruction that's also um, to fund other capital projects like if we do software upgrades like the 911 dispatch system if we have to upgrade that um, it includes that as well as like any upgrades to city facilities, like major upgrades or new buildings, like this building here, those would all be, that's considered that category as you're putting your money in. And then we're all here available if you have questions about which, you know, what service um, it is that you're putting your money into, we'll be glad to answer any questions. But at this time, you can get up and um, take your tax and start putting your money in where you want your tax bill. And just a note, they're in $10 increments, so we understand there's some that are less than $10, so if you cut it in half, we'll count it as $5, <laughs> but don't cut it any more of that because us accountants, we, that, we won't know how to count that. So, <laughs> but, Yeah, you can go. So what I have on the screen now is general fund revenue sources. We talked about property tax and sales tax. Those two actually, property tax is 39.5% of the general fund. Now we're talking general fund. You know, that's the main operating fund of the city where most of the city services that you utilize are, are funded, so within the general fund. Property tax is 39.5%, sales tax 294 so that means the total of those two, that's 68.9% of the city's total budget. And I would say that's pretty comparable to other local governments. You know, a lot of it is fun. So people think, well, where do I, where do I see property taxes? oh, what do they pay for? It's interesting. We've had student government days over the years here at the city of Mesquite. And when those seniors come in and you talk to them about the city budget, they, they don't understand where property taxes go. Um, a lot of people talk about property taxes as a negative thing, but it's, it's vitally important to run a city and to provide all those services for you. So, and sales tax as well. That's why you need to shop in Mesquite, right? We need to shop local and make sure those sales tax dollars stay here in the city of Mesquite and, and attract more businesses in. But there are other sources of revenue in the general fund. Charges for services, that's where like the sanitation for your solid waste residential collection fees go. Um, Interest income, we do earn interest on our money that sits in the bank, fines and forfeitures, that would be like through the court system, and uh, licenses and permits, all those kind of things. So there are a few other uh, sources of revenue for the general fund. So 
here's another question. How does the city spend your tax dollars? Well, you see, you saw some of the categories, so let me show you on a chart what that looked like. So this is fiscal year 17. This is last year's actual results for, for the general fund expenditures. So 110.5 million. And police and fire made up 54.8% of that. I think many citizens feel that that public safety category is important, and you can see that. Plus, it also takes a lot of staff to staff all of our fire stations and to have police patrol to the level that we need in the city of Mesquite, according to our charter. So that's why uh, police and fire, or public safety, is 54.8% of general fund expenditures. And then you see all the other categories here. The cat they're all they're grouped by departments and functional areas or program areas. Areas. And we're going to take a little bit um, deeper look at that tonight. So I've kind of grouped them here in some other categories, public safety, debt service, that's that capital improvement line item that Myra was talking about, major capital projects, public works, general government, quality of life services, and program services. And then of course we have the other category, and you're probably thinking, what does all that mean? So what I, I wanted us to talk a little bit more in detail this year. We have a different kind of format this year than last year. We want to kind of show you what you're getting for your tax dollars. I think some things are pretty obvious to people, but I think there's a lot there that people aren't aware of that your tax dollars are funding and their services that you would want as a citizen here in the city of Mesquite. So let's take a first look at public safety. That's the, that's the largest funded item in the general fund. When most people think of public safety, of course they think of police patrol and fire protection, right? <laughs> But did you know that within fire, there's also several other areas. There's fire prevention. Fire prevention, maybe they're educating businesses and homeowners on how to have safe environments so that they hopefully can prevent fires from happening in their organizations or in their homes. They'll also go in and examine fires after they happened and study them and try to um, find out ways to improve fire prevention methodologies for businesses and homeowners. And I'm sure there's a whole lot more that they do as well. Um, emergency medical services, this is part of the fire department. You see the ambulances that we have that respond to accidents or medical emergencies throughout the city. That's our ambulance crew. And then emergency management services, this is funded in the general fund as well. You know, once a month on Wednesday, you hear the sirens, right, the emergency sirens. That's important in Texas. I'm originally from Michigan, but I'm telling you what, we have some storms down here, right? We have um, tornado warnings, and we have flooding, flood warnings, and all of that. So emergency management team, they work to make sure that we can respond to whatever might be coming at the city of Mesquite, and they do a great job here at the city of Mesquite. So that's emergency management services. When we had Hurricane um, Harvey, I'm sure you all were aware of that, and that we kind of helped with a, with a center as the, re as the people were bussed up here, and they came through the center to be then placed into... Um, temporary housing facilities. So, you know, it's all, that's what emergency management's all about. On the police side, there's more than just police patrol. We have criminal investigation. You know, they help solve the crime. So when something happens, they're going to go out, they're going to find out who did it, and then lock them up, right? And a lot of times you'll see in the paper where they do a great job, um, you know, with their resources, investigating and coming to the end where they can find the bad guy. Um, school resource officers, this program puts a police presence in our public schools, which is definitely needed today. Another cool thing that I've observed about our school resource officer program is they'll educate the students on all kinds of things, like don't drink and drive, don't take drugs, and they've got some incredible programs that they've run for the schools. So they're not just there like patrolling the hallways, they're actually interacting with these kids, um, helping them to become better citizens someday themselves. And I think it's just an awesome program. And then we, of course, have police technical services. Our police staff, if you've ever seen a police car, they have mobile data computers. They have all these things that they have to do to run that car as they're out patrolling. And police technical services help with that along with many other things. And then, of course, there's 911 dispatch. How many of you have ever had to call 911? A few? I'm telling you what, if you have to use them, you want to know that they're there and they're ready to answer your call and help you because um, it's just a vital service that most cities have. And we here at Mesquite have, a, I would say, a top-notch 911 dispatch center. So your tax dollars are helping fund that as well. So the next highest category is that thing called debt service. So when we refer to debt service, we are referring to the principal and interest that we pay on bonds and we sell bonds here at the city of Mesquite to fund those major capital improvements. Now, I'll tell you, the first time we ever mentioned that a few years ago, people were shocked. But you know what? Most cities, almost all cities, sell bonds to fund major capital projects. And this is why. Um, the, it spreads the cost of the project. Oh. I just want to be helpful. 
Oh, okay. Okay. All right. <laughs> the um, they spread the cost of the project over the life of the asset or the project that's being built, and that way the taxpayers that are utilizing that asset or that project or that street or that building are paying for it over the life of the asset, and it also allows the city to accomplish more um, without there being major tax fluctuations, um, so that can be spread a little bit smoother. It kind of smooths out the effect of those major capital projects. Um, so in the, what we have listed here are for the last three fiscal years, what projects were funded by bond sales. So you see we do a lot of major street reconstruction, Town East Boulevard. Uh, you see real Texas roads, that's our street. We had the street bond election a few years ago and we're taking care of all those residential streets. Our P25 public safety radio system, a huge improvement and it made us digital and it really improved the communications with police and fire. Street and alley improvements are on there every year. Municipal building improvements are on there every year in vehicles and computer equipment that's on a replacement schedule. You see fire station number four. We're working toward replacing fire station number four. If you've ever been there, it needs to be replaced. It's pretty old and kind of um, sinking foundation. So police mobile data computers, we have to update those every so many years and software upgrades. Then you see a couple of other road projects on the last year there. Uh, Syene Road out by the airport. That's so that we can have a road to support the industrial development that will go out there, including Ashley Furniture. You know, we landed that project through economic development. So they're coming to town to build their uh, large multi- um, distribution center and manu light manufacturing. And then of course the Thomas and Square project. So a lot of major capital projects happen and it's paid through debt service. So when you see that line item in the budget, that's what it's all about. Principal and interest on the bonds. Yes. One thing I wanted to help with and focus everyone on, and now my phone just went back to its screensaver, is a comparison of Mesquite's percentage of its revenue that goes to debt service versus say a comparable city. And I just wanted to help with that. Ours was what, 13 and a half percent? So in comparison, the city of Dallas, our next door neighbor, um, can anyone guess what a percentage of their budget goes to their debt service, the exact same things, paying general obligation bond debt service for roads, sewer, streets, uh, computer equipment, things like that. Can anyone guess what right now the city of Dallas's uh, percentage of its revenue that it brings in that goes to debt service? Anyone get a, how much? 18 higher. No, it's not the 40s. Yeah, that'd be rough. <laughs> Almost 30. 28% of the city of Dallas's every dime that they get in from one way or another goes into their debt service. So our next door neighbor uh, to the west and a little bit to the south and one little straggler up there in the north, um, their percentage of what they put into debt service is over twice the amount that we do. Uh, so, you know, if you're talking about fiscal responsibility, um, we're being a lot more fiscally responsible by keeping that debt service down. The lower the debt service percentage is, the more they can go to current projects. Mm -hmm. And so that's real important. I just wanted to point that out to let everybody know that. And that's it. That's okay. it. Here you go. <laughs> Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Miklos. So, yes, and um, we have also shown over the years like the debt per capita. So you take the population of a city and you take their debt service, annual debt service, and you divide it to come up with that average annual debt per capita. That's another way to measure. So yeah, we are in good shape compared to other cities. There are many of them issue way a lot more debt than we do because they can handle that load. So. Okay, so public works. What is public works all about? So here you have several, um, several divisions. You have um, traffic engineering. This would be like traffic signals and safe intersections. You think about when you approach intersections, you have stop signs and they're strategically placed. Traffic signals are timed. And last year, fiscal year 17, our traffic engineering department performed over 648 traffic studies. So they're out there studying and monitoring and watching the intersections to make sure that we have safe intersections. Section. So that's vitally important to us as citizens. Um, street lighting. Um, anybody know what the monthly bill is that we pay for lighting the streets of Mesquite, all the streets of Mesquite? Any ideas? 
how much would it be per month that we pay in electricity? Not quite that high. It's about 90000 a month. So we pay almost a million dollars a year just to light the streets of Mesquite because we have a large area to cover. So that's, that's a huge budget item, right? So that's what some of the tax dollars go for. Uh, engineering. What engineering does, they oversee city projects and also commercial development projects coming in. They oversee to make sure that they're up to code and following engineering standards. Um, residential solid waste, this is part of the public works team. So of course that's where they pick up your trash every, every week. So that's an important crew. And what I like about here in the city of Mesquite is it's our own staff. Many cities will outsource that and that's an option for cities, but here it's our own staff so we have more control over the quality of the work. So, uh, and the work that's being done. So I think that's a good thing for the city of Mesquite. We have our compost facility where you as a citizen can get free mulch if you want it, but it's also a place to drop stuff off, uh, large items, and they'll chop up all the trees and create mulch out of that and, and reuse it. So street maintenance, of course, that was one of the number one things, I think one or number one or number two on the citizen survey that, you know, we need to work on our streets and we're, we're working hard to answer that the answer that request that you have to um, improve the street maintenance in the city of Mesquite. But we have 440 streets, 220 alleys. So that's a lot of miles to take care of uh, as far as maintaining. So that's part of the public works budget. And then we have equipment services. The city of Mesquite has over 700 pieces of equipment that our internal staff, our mechanics, work on to try to save the city money and be a little more efficient about that operation than just sending it out to be repaired. So we make good use of our time that way and our money that way. That's all part of public works. Then we come to general government. So this is a, a large uh, category of divisions, but a small part of the budget, right? So here, this is where city council, now they really don't have a large budget. City council has a very small budget, but they're part of the general government area. The city manager's office, he and his team are there. So this is the departments that help run the city from a general government perspective. You have economic development. They work hard to draw in businesses and developers to locate and build in Mesquite. And we want that, we want growth, and there's a lot happening in Mesquite these days. So they landed Ashley Furniture. They've got restaurants like Porch Swing that are being built, and Snuffers came, and there's a whole bunch of stuff going on in the city of Mesquite, and, and new subdivisions being built. So that's all part of economic development. We have the communications and marketing team. They're the ones that told you about the Town Hall Tuesday. Wayne and his team, they do a great job offering things to the citizens, communicating with you on a regular basis. The Art Center, how many of you have participated in events at the Art Center? They have great programs that they run there. So we have the Art Center, Building Maintenance, City Secretary, the City Attorney's Office, um, Human Resources. We have over, in the summertime, we have over 1,300 employees here at the City of Mesquite. It's higher in the summer because we hire the summer staff for all the summer programs, like lifeguards for the pools and things like that. Uh, risk Management, to make sure we're all safe and doing things the right way. We have finance. This is, of course, my area. Accounting, warehouse operations, print shop mailroom, uh, purchasing in the tax office, municipal court, budget and financial analysis. That's all part of finance to make sure that we, as the money comes in, we invest that money wisely. It's budgeted according to what council and the citizens want, uh, and that we follow purchasing laws when we spend it. Um, so that's all managed through the finance operations. Um, and that information technology, we're in a digital world, right? We rely heavily on computers. So our, inform our information technology or our IT staff is excellent here at the city of Mesquite. So they support us well. So that's general government. Then you have quality of life services. And what I've done here is I've kind of grouped them by planning and development, housing and community services, and neighborhood services. Of course, planning and development is where you have like building inspection, licensing and compliance. These are the guys that go out and make sure that the restaurants are clean or hospitals or businesses that have food where they're handling food. They make sure that they're all up to up, uh, compliant with all the rules and laws. Planning and zoning to make sure that subdivisions are subdivisions and industrial areas are industrial areas and that everybody's following the plan, the master plan for the city. And then we have historic preservation. We have some cool historic properties here in Mesquite trying to preserve the, the wonderful history that we have in this community. 
And then under housing and community services, you have the public health clinic, public transportation. We have volunteer services. We have many wonderful citizens in Mesquite that volunteer their time to help out with different things. And that's where that's kind of tracked. Of course, animal services, the animal shelter. They're doing a great job. Um, and then neighborhood services, that's environmental code. And then neighborhood vitality is a new division that we added last year. And that's uh, this is Yolanda in the picture here. She's out there, and she's had a couple of neighborhood um, meetings already, trying to reach out to neighborhoods and get them excited about improving their neighborhoods and just um, sharing with them good information about how to make things better in Mesquite. And then the last category is program services. This would be parks and recreation and library. So this is where a lot of times you pay user fees to participate. If you want to be involved in a recreation program, there's usually like a participation fee. Um, but we have um, park operations. Here in the city, we have 70 city parks that cover about over 1,708 acres. And I, th I think Mesquite has beautiful parks. That's all part of your tax dollars. Uh, pools, tennis courts, special events like Christmas in the Park or Summer Sizzle or Breakfast with the Bunny, things like that. And at the library, of course, uh, they have books, both hard copy and digital, um, online services, summer reading programs, and resource materials. So all of that you're getting for $62 a month on the average home valued in the city of Mesquite. So I think it's a great return on your investment. The other part of the city budget are uh, some other op city operations. This would be water sewer fund, the drainage fund, municipal airport fund, and the golf course. Um, so I bring these up uh, and say that they're self-sufficient because I think a lot of times people might confuse general government and property taxes, how they're used, versus these other funds. These funds are self-sufficient, meaning that the fees that they charge their customers for their particular service or good that they're providing, those fees are to cover the operation of that fund and the maintenance of that program. So the water sewer fund and the rates that are charged there, that is kept within the water sewer fund to pay for running the water and sewer system and maintaining it. And then, uh, but they don't get any money from property taxes or sales tax. That all stays in general government. Same with the drainage fund. The drainage fund is where um, all, you know, we, this was another thing I realized when I moved to Texas. I saw these huge cement conduits and I thought, what is that for? Why do you have such huge cement ditches? But I realized when it rains in Texas, it rains and it doesn't soak in. It just rains so hard it has to go somewhere. So that's all about the drainage. And we have a street sweeping program because by, by the laws, we have to keep the streets clean so it doesn't go into the, to the sewage system and into the drainage system. So that's all the drainage fund. Of course, the airport, uh, that's self-funded by the fuel sales and the, the hangar rentals out there. And then, of course, the municipal golf course is covered by the fees that are charged for people that use the golf course. But again, they're self-sufficient. General fund monies do not go there to those funds. So... That's um, all of those areas. That's where, not these, but the other ones, that's where your $62 a month for the average homeowner is going. Cliff will come up and we'll take questions and we can tell you about these important dates. Let me just close by saying, uh, we're happy to answer any questions. Uh, this, like I said, this Friday and Saturday, the council will meet uh, in, in their budget workshop. And this is when we will present a lot of in-depth information about the finances and our strategies. And then uh, the council will have uh, deep discussions. If you can't make that, uh, those will be streamed and uh, will be available on, on our website. Um, if you'd like to provide public input, uh, we have uh, three public hearings coming up, and these are the dates. Uh, pretty much at all of the uh, or the next three city council meetings. These are uh, uh, more opportunities for citizens to come in and uh, express their um, uh, interest and uh, uh, oh, uh, support of different programs or ways we can uh, uh, allocate funds differently. So uh, with that, if you have any questions that w we can answer, uh, we are stalling for a little bit of time. You know, <laughs> Four accountants can't count uh, 21 buckets very fast, <laughs> apparently. So, um, but uh, um, if you do have a question, we um, do have a microphone. So, I'm sorry, Wayne. No. Any questions? Somebody Anything? Question. Any, any question about a service that we're providing? Um, well, uh, this is a first uh, uh, town hall with. Uh, Without any questions, we um, are able to answer questions about other things as well. So, if there's something going else going on in the community, 
Uh, you have a question on, uh, we have several people. So yes, we have our first volunteer. Thank well, you I just for being help. so brave. We I'm, I'm a helper, I'm a giver. Um, so the city has a ad valorem or property tax rate. Currently, that is what, 6, 0.687? Yes. Yes, sir. So do you have, and I don't mean to catch you, I didn't ask you that before, and this isn't a setup. Um, what are comparable cities next to us? What is their tax rate in comparison to ours? For example, what's the city of Dallas's tax rate, if you know it? Yeah, I don't know them off the top of my head, and that's normally a chart that we show, which we will show that on Friday. Um, if you look at the tax rate itself, Mesquite is probably toward a little bit toward the higher end of our seven comparable cities. We usually compare with Plano, Richardson, Arlington, Grand Prairie. But you can't just look at the tax rate. Mm -hmm. You have to look at the average home value. So what we do is we calculate what one penny of tax generates for the city of Mesquite versus what does one penny of tax generate in like the city of Plano. It's a vast difference. So when you, you can't just go out there and look at tax rate. You have to look at the average home values and what one penny generates. Then it will be comparable. So that's a good question. But what is, what is the tax rate? Mr. Miklos? In the city of Dallas? Yes, you have it on your phone, right? It's, point, it's point 0.78. Point 0.78, so we're point 0.687. So um, with our seven comparables, we're to the middle and to the high end tax rate, but on the one cent generated, we're the lowest. So one penny of tax in Mesquite generates a lot less money than a penny in Plano or Arlington or Grand Prairie. So that's the challenge that we face. Um, but really, over the years, I feel, I've been here ten, over 10 years now, the city of Mesquite does well with the money that we have. So we have a question here. Yeah, question over here. I'll help kill a minute. minute. <laughs> I just want to thank the city of Mesquite for saving me $250 this month. I had a plumbing issue, and uh, this plumber came to the house and said, have you had anybody stick a camera down your, your sewer pipe? And I said, oh, no. And, and he said, I'll do it, but it'll cost $250. Or you can call the city of Mesquite, and they will send a crew out and do it for you for no charge. They did it. They located the, the problem and saved me $250. So... Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, that's that's another one of those hidden services that we we do provide. And, uh, and uh, you know, you're you're in, you, when you encounter something like that, it's a major emergency. And that is uh, one of those services that we will come out and we will uh, at least run uh, a check down the sewer line to make sure that uh, it, to help you determine whether the problems on your side or the city side. Most of the time it's where the sewer line connects to the city main. And uh, the, uh, if you have a plumber come out and uh, dig up and trench up your yard, it, it can be a, a shocking uh, uh, expenditure to your household budget. So uh, we're, we're glad to do those things to, to at least help out. A lot of the times the pro problem is on the resident side. Unfortunately, we can't go out there and fix that. Well, again, while we're uh, waiting, uh, did you have something else? I could always talk. Oh, well, uh, <laughs> yeah, well, in interest of time, uh, we'll go ahead and uh, turn over uh, the town hall to um, our city council members to uh, uh, share a few words. So, Mr. Aleman, if you want to come up and start us off. Thank you, sir. First of all, to Debbie Mould, you did a fantastic job tonight. and appreciate your work <laughs> making everything so clear. $62, that's the best spent $62 for your money. I tell you what, it's, it's great service for your money. And also just to uh, echo what I've heard our mayor say before, we are an urban city. And I've heard him say that more and more, and I like that. We're not a small town. Our city is 145,000 and growing. So we have a great challenge. It's a wonderful challenge because there's a lot of movement in our city and our population is gonna grow more. And because of that, as we get together and we're doing it again, it's a yearly thing we do to take a look at the budget. And as we do this again, we have to take a look at the immediate past, where the spending has been, where we are at the present, how the spending is right now, and to take a look at the immediate future and the, the forecast of the future as well. Um, needless to say, you all know our economy has been good, but we've just come out of a recession. And so we have to continue to be conservative, but there's still much to do. 
So uh, we're going after it Friday and Saturday, and we're taking a look at these items one by one, and we want to continue to move forward with our city. Uh, you all know we've got growth going out right now, Interstate 20 going out that way, and uh, so guess what? We're going to need a fire station out there in that direction, police services out there. We've got a, a fire station that's going to need to be replaced. These things that we continue to look at the future, so it's very important what we're looking at taking a look at all these numbers, and you know numbers don't lie. So we'll be taking a look at it, studying Friday and Saturday, and appreciate your thoughts and prayers in regards to this. So thank you, Cliff. Appreciate the time. I just want to say thank you for all the citizens coming out, our staff, for a great presentation that y'all did. And I know y'all are going to have a lot for us on Friday and Saturday. Uh, a lot more breakdown than what we had today, and that's what we need. But we also need our citizens to, to let us know what, what you really want and how we need to spend this money. I mean, ultimately, that's our goal is to help spend it the way y'all want us to spend it. But we know that there are certain things that we have to have. We have to have fire service. We have to have police. We have to have the things. So there's, there's a certain amount of money that we know have to go to certain departments. because everybody wants more of something. So we'll, we'll do the best that we can to try to divide up whatever's left. But um, like I say, we always want our citizens to let us know what they want. Thank you. I guess I get to be up front now. <laughs> Is this on? All right. All right. Um, no, I appreciate and echo the uh, comments of my colleagues, and uh, I just wanted to add, again, if it hasn't been said already, this is y'all's money. It's super important, uh, and I know we do, and I'm not saying we don't, but uh, it's important for us to remember that this is y'all's money, and uh, it's not money that is just there. Um, uh, the city isn't entitled to it. Uh, uh, you provide that. And in return, uh, and I agree with uh, Councilman Burroughs, or Deputy Mayor Pro Tem Burroughs, um, that uh, it, it, it's how you want it to be spent. It's your priorities, because this is your money. Um, we have a lot of opportunities uh, that are already coming and that are going to come in the next uh, year and a half uh, with the city. Uh, a tremendous amount of development along I-20 and infill development along 30, along US-80, along 635. We've already seen the uh, uh, Verde Medical Project uh, uh, get greenlit and is starting to move forward. There's a lot of other projects that we have in the works that are tremendous and will help uh, with the revenue that comes in for tax dollars and property values as well. And uh, uh, doing it the right way uh, and doing it the way that you want us to do it uh, is the key element. When we spend your money, uh, it needs to be spent the way you want it to be spent. When development occurs, it needs to be development the way you want it to occur uh, so that we can all achieve that objective. The reason I was pointing out the property tax and uh, the ad valorem tax rates as a comparison is so that you know that Mesquite is in good shape in comparison to other cities. Uh, Garland's at 7.70, uh, so it's a little bit higher than Mesquite is. Um, uh, and, and you're right, some cities can bear a little bit more and they can pay a little bit more, um, but Mesquite's in great fiscal shape uh, and it needs to stay and continue to be in great fiscal shape so that more of our present dollars go to paying our police and our fire and uh, our other city employees to keep those services directly to you. The less we pay in debt service, the more we can get directly to you. And so uh, I I'm really encouraged by this year in this budget and I encourage all of y'all to let us know exactly what you want. That's it, that's it. Thank you. And I know y'all are ready for two things, to hear the results and to get out of here. So um, <laughs> I always say politicians can't be short, but I'll try to be. The only comments that I have to like to make about budget is, and I try to do this every year, is there's some sort of a misnomer about like state and national budgets and governments. 
Mesquite and like all other cities in Texas, we're only allowed to budget and spend what comes in. And a lot of people think, well, you're, you know, the, the, you're filling the coffers, and you're doing this, and you're doing that. But the reality is the money that's collected through all the different ways you've seen tonight, that's it. That's what we have to spend. And some, some years it goes up, there's years that it goes down. Uh, we're fortunate right now to be in a growth cycle, and uh, we're trying to do it wisely. Uh, we have our mayor pro tem, our deputy mayor pro tem, and Councilman Miklos have all stated uh, that, yes, it's dollars that you spend, and we want to be caretakers of the dollars and do it the right way. Um, providing that we keep the services up. One thing we don't want to do is lower any of the services that this city provides to our citizens. And uh, unfortunately, they don't reduce those costs very much, do they, city manager? No, they don't. So with that, I want to thank all of y'all for being here tonight. Like I said, I try to be short. And I know at this time we have the results. All right. This is the result. So um, don't mind the number on the left column. That's the number in order of the bucket, so we can keep we could keep track. So, but top police services was 19.4 percent. Um, then fire services at 12.2. Then capital improvement projects at 8.8. .8, and then emergency medical services at 6.9. Code enforcement and neighborhood appearance 6.5. And then government administration was 6%. Um, percent. So that's the top six. So now I'm going to show you in comparison to how it's currently budgeted um, or, or how the, it was currently spent in 2017. So, so you see that. So this is in order of how it's, you know, current services and how um, it's allocated that way. So... As you can see, it's right in line, police, fire, um, capital improvement projects, and government administration are um, closer to the top. And then we highlighted the top six that you had. So you see where emergency ma um, medical services were lower on how it is currently funded. Um, so that shows you want, you want, that means you all put more money in your bucket than what was down there saying we um, currently funded at, and then code enforcement neighborhood appearance was also more than what um, we currently have it funded at. So good job. <laughs> Thank you, Myra, and uh, I would like to thank the finance team for uh, being here tonight and to uh, help out with uh, uh, the, uh, the program and the exercise, and uh, appreciate, uh, if, if you can, uh, Myra's efforts uh, this time of year. She is constantly uh, running spreadsheets and running numbers and uh, changing things because uh, the city manager has uh, some crazy ideas sometimes. So uh, Myra's very good at, uh, at making sure that all the money is uh, allocated and we have a good budget process. And I'd also like to thank Debbie Mole for um, all that she does is to guide our finances. We are in great financial shape and it is uh, largely due to Debbie uh, keeping on top of all of our expenditures and revenues. So uh, last thing I wanna leave you with is uh, we will do uh, Town Hall Tuesday here in the fall. And uh, maybe I think we have two more this year, but we welcome your uh, input on ideas. Uh, uh, a lot of times staff tries to figure out what you want to hear, and, uh, but we'd really like to hear from you. So if there's a topic out there that you think that uh, the community would like to hear about, please let us know. Uh, and you can always email us or talk to us after the meeting. And if there's anything we can help you with, uh, staff will stick around as long as you need us. Thank you for being here tonight.